Did you know that if we could travel to each galaxy in one second, it would take us 63,376 years to visit just the two trillion galaxies in the observable universe? Scientists believe that the observable universe is only 5% of the whole universe. Our own Milky Way galaxy has 400 billion stars, and it takes light thousands of years to travel from one galaxy to another. What's even more astonishing is that the universe is expanding in all directions at a speed faster than the speed of light. Famous physicist Brian Cox recently said that the universe is so vast that we can't even imagine it. This is the picture that Hubble took and you see that it's anything but empty. It's called the Hubble Deep Field image. It's one of the most important and fascinating images in the recent history of astronomy. It's not empty, it's got lots of structure, lots of points of light in, and virtually every one of them, over 10,000 of them, are actually galaxies, distant galaxies. So they're not stars, they're galaxies. Now those galaxies, on average, have, what, 100,000 million stars like our sun in them, at least. So 100,000 million stars in each one of those 10,000 blobs. The most distant object in that image is 13.2 thousand million light years away. Now, light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, 186,000 miles a second. And at that speed, it's taken over 13 billion years to travel from the most distant object in that image to Earth, to the Hubble Space Telescope. Now when you think that the Earth is only just under 5 billion years old, it means that most of the light from most of the galaxies in that image began their journey, began its journey to Earth before there was an Earth. And for some of the most distant galaxies there, they were over halfway here when the solar system was just a cloud of gas and dust. It hadn't yet coalesced into the sun and the planets and moons of the solar system. So. Imagine what that looks like. Imagine what that looks like when you extend it over the entire sky. Well, this is a beautiful map of the observable universe. Every dot on that map is a galaxy with 100 billion stars like our sun in it, at least. There, you see that the structure in there, they're not randomly distributed. It's very interesting. We're beginning to understand where that structure came from. Just to get some sense of scale, that little line up there, that's the one billion light year line. So light takes a billion years to travel from one end of that line to the other. This is the observable universe. This is the number of stars we know from observation are in the observable universe at the moment. 30,000 million, million, million stars. Just like our sun, some bigger, some smaller. 350 billion large galaxies, 7,000 billion smaller dwarf galaxies. That's the observable bit of the universe. So how big is our universe? Is it infinite or does it have an edge? What is its ultimate fate? What existed before the Big Bang and what lies beyond it? Let's dive in to find out. To begin, the fact that we can determine the observable universe's size to be 93 billion light years across is truly astonishing. But how do we come up with this? The story starts with an Australian mathematician and physicist named Christian Doppler, who lived in the 19th century. Doppler was trying to explain a peculiar phenomenon related to electromagnetic waves. When an observer moves closer to the source of a wave, the length of that wave decreases, and if they move away, it increases. We now call this the Doppler effect, and it applies to all types of waves. To understand this better, imagine you're standing on a sidewalk watching cars drive by. As each car approaches you, the sound of its engine appears higher in pitch. However, as the car moves away from you, the sound gradually becomes lower in pitch. This is the Doppler effect in action. For astronomers, the Doppler effect is crucial. By using stars as reference points, they can detect anomalies in the wavelengths they observe. If the wavelengths are increasing, it means the object is moving away, resulting in a red shift. Conversely, if the wavelengths are decreasing, it indicates the object is moving toward us, resulting in a blue shift. Fast forward to the 1920s, when Edwin Hubble made a significant discovery. He observed that some objects in the universe were moving toward each other, while others were moving away. In a broader sense, it appeared that everything was moving away from everything else. Hubble's revelation was groundbreaking, shifting the prevailing view of a fixed and stable universe. What's more, 
this universal expansion seemed to be accelerating. Although we still don't fully understand why or how this expansion occurs, subsequent measurements have confirmed and refined this concept. Dark matter and dark energy are the leading explanations for these observations. The study of redshift is fundamental for understanding cosmic distances, especially for objects that are incredibly far away. However, things become a bit tricky when dealing with vast cosmic distances. For example, if you're observing something one light year away, you're essentially seeing it as it was one year ago. But during that year, the universe has expanded, increasing the distance between you and that object beyond one light year. Astronomical observations have estimated the age of the universe to be around 13.7 billion years. One of the most distant objects we've detected is a galaxy called GNZ11, or GNZ11, which is 13.4 billion years old, nearly as old as they come. However, despite the light from this galaxy reaching us from 13.4 billion years ago, it now lies much farther away than 13.4 billion light years. In fact, astronomers believe it's a staggering 32 billion light years from Earth. So it's essential to recognize that the universe's age in years doesn't directly correspond to its size in light years. But we can go even further back in time. We can detect photons that existed before any stars or galaxies formed. These ancient photons originate from the cosmic microwave background, known as CMBR, a faint radiation filling all of space. This radiation represents the earliest known electromagnetic radiation and is, as far as we can tell, the oldest phenomenon we can detect. When it comes to understanding the cosmic microwave background radiation, one of our most accurate sources of information is the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP. It, along with other estimates, has revealed that the farthest observable photons we can detect originate from a staggering 46.5 billion light years away. This suggests that our observable universe extends to a minimum of 93 billion light years across equally in both directions. As for Earth's location within the broader universe, we don't have a precise understanding, and there's no compelling reason to believe that we occupy a special or central position. In any case, the observable universe is estimated to be approximately 93 billion light years in size. However, this raises the intriguing question. What about the entirety of the universe? Is it infinite in extent? The straightforward answer is that we simply don't know. Anything beyond the observable universe lies beyond our capacity to observe, making it impossible to provide a definitive answer. Nevertheless, we can make educated guesses based on various studies attempting to calculate the universe's true size. For example, one statistical estimate carried out by researchers at Oxford suggests that the universe might be 251 times larger than the observable universe. This would equate to a vast expanse measuring 23,343 billion light years across, and that's a conservative estimate. In another study, it's proposed that the universe spans a mind-boggling 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 122 megaparsecs in size, with one megaparsec being equivalent to 3.26 million light years. This number is so astronomically vast that it defies reasonable units of measurement, if the universe truly encompasses such immense dimensions, even if it's not technically infinite, it would be practically infinite from our perspective. Nothing from our location could ever reach its supposed edge, nor could anything from the edge reach us. But here's where things get even stranger. Remember, we inhabit an expanding universe, a fact initially observed by Hubble, albeit with some errors in his initial measurements. More recent studies have converged on an expansion rate of roughly 70 kilometers per megasecond. In practical terms, this means that an object located one megaparsec away from us is receding at a rate of 70 kilometers per second. If it's two megaparsecs away, the recession speed doubles to 140 kilometers per second, and so on, making the universe's dynamics even more intriguing. To put it in simple terms, we often say that the observable universe is about 93 billion light years wide, which is equivalent to 28,500 megaparsecs. Now, if we consider the points that are the farthest away, they appear to be moving away at an astonishing speed of approximately 2 million kilometers per second. That's almost 10 times faster than the speed of light, 
and according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, nothing can exceed the speed of light. So what's happening here? Well, it's not as if the universe itself is zooming away at 2 million kilometers per second. Instead, it's the space between objects that's expanding at this rate. To understand this, we turn to Einstein's theory of general relativity, which handles these cosmic conundrums better. However, even general relativity is essentially a local law limited to our universe. We remain in the dark about what might exist outside of our universe, or even if there is an outside boundary. It's important to note that when we talk about the expansion rate, it's expressed as speed per distance. This means that cosmic objects aren't actively moving away from each other, but rather, the space between them is increasing. If you were to attempt to travel to these distant planets, you'd need to move faster than the speed of light, which, as far as our knowledge goes, is impossible. In fact, calculations show that objects beyond a distance of 4,740 megaparsecs are receding from us at a speed greater than the speed of light. This effectively means they can never reach each other. However, galaxies closer than this can still emit light that reaches us, allowing us to observe them. Now, all of this is based on the assumption that the universe will continue expanding indefinitely, which is something we can't say for sure. The universe could potentially halt its expansion and start collapsing in on itself, or it might continue to expand at an ever-increasing pace. So, while it's theoretically possible that the universe isn't infinite, from a practical standpoint, it very well may be. But this still doesn't fully answer the question. While the universe might be infinite, our ability to study it is limited to the part where light has had time to reach us. As far as our observations go, there are galaxies in every direction, without any sign of slowing down, or an edge to the universe. Some arguments against an infinite universe point to the Big Bang Theory, suggesting that the universe started from an infinitesimal point. However, this argument relies on a misconception. The Big Bang wasn't an explosion in space. It was an expansion of space itself. Before the Big Bang, space as we know it didn't exist. So it's not about something finite turning into something infinite, but rather a point of infinite energy. This still leaves the question of whether the universe can truly be infinite or not somewhat open-ended. When we ponder the idea of the universe expanding, it's natural to wonder what exactly it's expanding into. Well, from what we can discern, it's not that the universe is expanding into some external space. Rather, it's the very fabric of space itself that's expanding. To put it differently, it's as if all points within the universe are gradually moving away from each other, like raisins in dough swelling as it bakes. Now, if the universe does indeed have a finite size, it might suggest the presence of an edge and something beyond that edge. However, the nature of these boundaries remains a profound mystery. Here's another intriguing thought. If the universe is truly infinite, does that mean there is an infinite number of versions of you out there? Could there be countless variations, like one where you have cat ears and another where you're immortal? It's a fascinating idea, but it's not quite that straightforward. From a cosmic perspective, the chances of encountering someone exactly like you are so incredibly minuscule that they might as well be considered zero. In an infinite universe, the likelihood of a new you is essentially the product of infinity and zero, which is a perplexing mathematical conundrum. Zero times infinity, what's the answer? It's one of those indeterminate problems. On one hand, it seems like the answer should be zero because anything multiplied by zero equals zero. On the other hand, it appears to be infinity because anything multiplied by infinity equals infinity. The solution hinges on just how close to zero that zero is and how vast that infinity truly is. In our practical context, we can't precisely quantify how unlikely it is for a particular life form to evolve, making the problem indeterminate. So you could be the only you out there, or there might be an infinite array of variations. There's even the possibility of a finite number of views, which adds an extra layer of complexity. You've probably noticed that there are many uncertainties, possibilities, and unanswered questions in this discussion. That's the current state of our understanding. We're still in the early stages of unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos. Whether the universe is finite or infinite remains unclear, but the journey of exploration is just as rewarding as any final destination. 
What we do know for certain is that the universe is vast, an awe-inspiring and occasionally intimidating place. The fact that we, products of stardust and natural forces, are attempting to comprehend this vastness is both wondrous and admittedly a bit daunting. Nevertheless, one thing is undeniable. Our universe had a beginning, and someday it will have an end. In fact, science suggests there are four possible ways our universe could meet its ultimate fate. These scenarios depend on three critical factors. The overall shape of the universe, its destiny, and the quantity of enigmatic dark energy in existence. Two of these scenarios revolve around the concept of the universe being flat or open, akin to a negatively curved surface, like a saddle. Our universe's ongoing expansion is driven by a mysterious force known as dark energy. Though its true nature eludes us, dark energy consistently accelerates the rate of cosmic expansion with each passing year. One theory concerning the ultimate fate of our universe hinges on the idea that its expansion will persist indefinitely, causing galaxies, stars, planets, and even the subatomic particles that constitute all matter to eventually lose their ability to hold together, resulting in their tearing apart. This intriguing theory is known as the Big Rip. Whether or not it becomes a reality depends on a critical factor known as critical density, which serves as the boundary value distinguishing between open models that continue to expand forever and closed models that eventually collapse. According to the insights of Robert Caldwell, a theoretical physicist at Dartmouth College, if the Big Rip scenario were to emerge as the ultimate fate of the universe, it would unfold approximately 22 billion years from now. By this time, our sun would have transformed from a main sequence star into a red giant, incinerating Earth in the process. Subsequently, the sun would transition into a white dwarf, spelling the end of our planet. Spoiler alert, Earth wouldn't survive this transformation and it would erupt roughly 30 minutes before the grand finale. Another widely discussed scenario regarding the universe's end revolves around understanding the true nature of dark energy. This scenario is known as the Big Freeze, often referred to as heat death or the Big Chill. In this scenario, the universe continues to expand at an accelerating pace. As this expansion unfolds, heat dissipates throughout space causing galaxies, stars, and planets to move farther and farther away from each other. In the extremely distant future, intelligent civilizations peering into the sky would likely feel isolated, as everything would be so far apart that light from distant stars and galaxies would never reach them. Eventually, the increasing distances between planets, stars, and galaxies would prevent the formation of new stars, leading to the permanent extinguishing of celestial lights. Over time, the temperature throughout the universe would plummet, inching relentlessly closer to absolute zero. At absolute zero, all movement ceases, and nothing can exist in such an environment, as there is absolutely no energy present. This marks the point at which the universe would reach a state of maximum entropy. In this chilling scenario, galaxies would become cosmic coffins, housing the remnants of deceased stars. Many scientists, astronomers, and physicists consider this one of the most likely outcomes for the universe's ultimate fate. The third way that our universe might come to an end is known as the Big Crunch, and it's seen as a direct consequence of the Big Bang. In this scenario, the universe doesn't keep expanding forever. Instead, after a considerable amount of time, possibly trillions of years, if the average density of the universe is sufficient to halt its expansion, the universe would initiate a process of collapsing inward. Ultimately, all matter and particles in existence would be drawn together into an incredibly dense state, potentially even forming a black hole singularity. Intriguingly, some scientists have theorized that the universe we see today might be the result of a cyclic repetition of the Big Bang, where the first cosmological event followed the collapse of a previous universe. This idea is known as conformal cyclic cosmology. Unlike the previous scenarios, this model relies on the concept of the universe having closed geometry, somewhat akin to the surface of a sphere. An event like the Big Crunch would resemble a single breath, with the universe exhaling the Big Bang and inhaling the Big Crunch. This could also occur if there's a reversal of the current expansion driven by dark energy. In a similar vein to this theory, the Big Bang is the concept of the Big Bounce, 
which proposes a symmetrical cycle. The universe continuously expands and then contracts onto itself in an ongoing cycle. Eventually, we could be one iteration among many in this universe's recurring pattern. Even more intriguing is the idea that each time the universe resets, it might play out in a remarkably similar manner. Perhaps the you listening or reading this right now is just one of countless versions that have existed before. Who can say for sure? Lastly, there's the theory known as the Big Slurp, which emerged recently after revelations about the Higgs boson's true nature. This particle plays a crucial role in granting mass to elementary particles. In this model, if the Higgs boson particle possesses a particular mass, it could suggest that the vacuum of our universe might be inherently unstable, possibly existing in a perpetually metastable state, a notion that has been debated extensively. In such a scenario, our universe could face a catastrophic event when a bubble from another alternate universe appears within ours. If this bubble exists in a lower energy state than our own bubble, it could lead to the complete annihilation of our universe. Essentially, all protons in all matter within our universe would decay, and consequently, so would we. Now, if that doesn't sound unpleasant enough, this sort of vacuum metastability event could potentially occur at any moment, anywhere in our universe. The bubble could suddenly emerge and start expanding at the speed of light, swallowing us entirely. Quite a disconcerting thought. Now let's discuss what existed before the Big Bang. There are several theories and ideas that have been proposed to address this question. Let's explore some of them here. The Multiverse Theory One intriguing idea to consider is the concept of a multiverse. The multiverse hypothesis suggests that our universe is just one of many universes that exist in a vast cosmic landscape. These universes may have different physical laws and constants, making them vastly different from our own. In this scenario, the Big Bang may have been the birth of our universe within a larger multiverse. However, this theory raises the question of what might exist beyond the multiverse, leading to an infinite regress of universes. The Cyclic Universe Another theory posits that the universe goes through an endless cycle of expansion and contraction. In this model, the Big Bang is not the beginning, but rather a phase in an ongoing cycle. Before our universe's expansion, there would have been a previous contraction, leading to a previous Big Bang. This cyclic model avoids the need for a true beginning, but raises questions about the nature of time itself. Quantum Cosmology Quantum cosmology attempts to merge the principles of quantum mechanics with cosmology to understand the universe's origin. According to some quantum cosmological models, there may be no before the Big Bang because time itself may have started with the Big Bang. In this view, the universe emerged from a quantum fluctuation in a pre-existing space-time. The No Boundary Proposal Renowned physicist Stephen Hawking proposed a theory known as the No Boundary Proposal. This theory suggests that the universe is like a closed surface without any boundaries, much like the surface of a sphere. In this model, asking what existed before the Big Bang is akin to asking what's north of the North Pole. It's a question without meaning. The Pre-Big Bang Cosmology Some theories propose that the universe has undergone multiple cycles of Big Bangs and contractions, and the current universe is just one phase in this cycle. These cycles could be part of a larger cosmic framework. However, these ideas remain highly speculative and lack concrete observational evidence. The Simulation Hypothesis A more unconventional idea is the Simulation Hypothesis, which suggests that our universe is a computer simulation created by advanced beings in a higher dimensional reality. If this were the case, the concept of a before the Big Bang might not even apply as the simulation itself may have been initiated by its creators. The Limitations of Human Understanding It's crucial to recognize the limitations of our current understanding and the potential boundaries of human knowledge. Some questions, such as what existed before the Big Bang, may be beyond our capacity to answer with certainty due to the lack of empirical evidence. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Also, hit that notification bell so you never miss an update from us. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.
and we'll see you in the next video.